It's been more than a decade in the making and prompted many thousands of people to take to the streets in protest against it in New Zealand. But today, the revamped Trans-Pacific Partnership was finally signed in Chile, minus the United States, of course. Trade ministers from the 11 Pacific Rim nations lauded the deal, calling it a powerful signal against protectionism and trade wars. More on that stuff shortly. New Zealand's business community is enthusiastic, saying it will lift incomes and create jobs. But as economics correspondent Patrick O'Mara reports, opponents say their fight isn't over yet. Trade ministers signed the revised TPP in Chile's capital, Santiago, taking a moment to congratulate themselves at getting the deal over the line after Donald Trump pulled the United States out last year. The Chilean Foreign Minister, Geraldo Manoz, says the signing sends a clear political message. It signals our decisive commitment to trade liberalisation, regional integration, economic growth and job creation. The commitment to open up markets in a block of countries worth a combined 10 trillion US dollars came only hours before the US President signed an order to impose steep tariffs on steel and aluminium. The Trade Minister, David Parker, says the contrasting views on trade spoke volumes. We see the rise in protectionism as a bad thing for the world, a bad thing for New Zealand, and it actually makes the relative importance of... The agreement will eliminate more than 95% of all tariffs over time and add an estimated $1.2 to $4 billion, or up to 1% to the New Zealand economy. The gains might sound modest, but the impact for some industries could be huge. Beef and Lamb's Rowena Hume cites the lucrative Japanese market, where beef exporters have experienced a sharp drop in sales since the country inked a free trade deal with Australia in 2015. In the last couple of years, since Australia's FTA entered into force with Japan, their beef exports have increased by um, about a billion. Allows have gone down by about 50 million. So the market's been growing, but we've been losing a lot of market share. Kiwi fruit and vegetable exporters will also enjoy a level playing field with foreign rivals in Japan, with Chilean kiwi fruit and Australian apples taking a bite out of returns to New Zealand growers. Richard Palmer from Horticulture New Zealand says standardising health safety rules for perishable goods across 11 nations will also bolster expansion plans. Having an agreement that enables us to get recognition rather than meeting the requirements of 10 different countries, having a mechanism to agree that New Zealand's process meets export markets requirements is really important to making it feasible for us to export. The $1.7 billion a year wine sector is eyeing expansion, particularly in Japan and the rest of Asia. Philip Gregan, the chief executive of industry body New Zealand Wine Growers, says a key development is the mutual recognition of regulations, which gets rid of any unnecessary block to selling overseas. A number of the Asian countries have, um, can I put it this way, quite sort of old-fashioned wine standards, and we've been uh, working very hard to try and bring those into a 21st century model, and I think TPP is going to help with that a lot. But opponents argue the revised trade pact is just the old deal with a new name, and it remains bad for workers, consumers and the environment. It's Our Futures, Oliver Hales, says they'll fight on and urges the public to voice their concerns as Parliament now considers passing the controversial pact into law. With a view to, to get people back on the street, to get people putting pressure on Labour and New Zealand first and letting them know that they know things haven't changed. It's unlikely to make much difference, with the National Party all but certain to join Labour and New Zealand first in ratifying the agreement, which the government hopes to do by early next year at the latest. The new TPP won't enter into force until it's ratified by at least half of the 11 nations involved. For Checkpoint, Patrick O'Mara.